Tampa, Florida. Man, what a oh disappointment this series has been. Wow. Oh, Talk my about God. Tampa slapped a 5-1 beaten on Florida Sunday to take a commanding 3-0 series lead. Uh, the Panthers had 35 shots on that visit. Didn't seem like it at all. I mean, this team did not look desperate. I mean, they're about to go down 3 nothing. Season's about to go down the shitter. And they just didn't look like they were playing with any sort of desperation whatsoever. Uh, Corey Perry, man, fifth goal of the playoffs. He's tied for the team lead. Just keeps getting it done. But uh, wait, we'll go to you first. What's for, what the fuck's up with Florida, man? Why why are they so bad? Like, why do they look so awful? Uh, I, I think there's a couple different things. Say, let's say three things jump out to me. They're all pretty obvious. The power play. Yeah, they got one today. Sam Reinhardt got them on the board. But holy shit. I mean, you start a playoff 0 for 27 or whatever it was. It, it's it's just there's no chance you're going to win. It's just it's it's so important. It's it's so hard to get offense going five on five in this game now. And that's the one chance you have. And you have so much skill. You're a team who scored four goals a game in the regular season. And you just throw up an absolute donut through fucking what through eight games in the playoffs. They didn't score a goal. It's just it's so unacceptable. I can't believe how it went down in terms of the power play. Uh, second thing being. I almost want an apology from all you guys. All you guys picked the Panthers, right? I picked the Panthers in five. Ah, I had Tampa. Okay, I did. I, I I picked the I picked the Panthers, but I originally had Tampa, and I switched my. my all right, decision. so Busy Grinnelly can apologize well, to Ray and myself. You're gonna blame me for fucking making you change your mind, G. I think you just do such a good job, Biz, at convincing our listeners your points that, yes, yes, I will blame you. But show that's just hand, because you're such a, a good analyst. Show of hands. Play a little game at home, everybody listening. Did you think not after shitting the bet on the power play in the first round and getting a little bit of a break, they would have made a couple of adjustments and the one of the hottest power plays in the league all season long with as many guns as they have on that team, would they not have at least got the power play going? Among well, anything that happened in the first round, show of hands. Wit? Okay. Um, yeah, Wit? I, would, I thought their power play was going to get going, but let me say this, dude. It took them till game three to throw Hornquist in front of the net. The guy's been in front of the net on the power play, which seems like 15 years in the NHL. Finally, they throw him out there, they get a goal. And listen, they could have tied that game up today. They're down 2 1, and Hornquist makes a difference in front. Wax Wade ends up going to Huberdo, wide open net, and Ryan McDonough. McDonough. The shaft of his stick. And that goes back to the point when I kind of inter in, uh, interrupted myself in looking for an apology from the Panthers pickers. This Tampa Bay team, guys, what did I say? Yeah. I got a DM from Stephen Camper, our buddy, former Bruin, longtime pro. You're a genius. You said never bet against Tampa. You don't fuck with this team. They don't even have Braden Point and they're doing this. And what is amazing is Toronto took them to the limit. Toronto had them. They had them. Fucking this close. And this team, they're champions. They every single detail, dude. They block shots. They get pucks out. They get on the defensive side. They do what it takes to win. They sacrifice their body. The list goes on and on. They're fast. They're strong. They're mean. They're tough. It is such a difficult team to play against that the Panthers, who made it look pretty difficult against a weak Washington team. Washington, maybe they played better than we thought. Maybe Florida just isn't that good. Maybe Florida had no chance in the playoffs with the roster they assembled, which is shocking on the season they had. But Tampa Bay, dude, I mean, how much can you say about one team? They don't even have their best player. And what happens? Kucherov steps up. He's looked phenomenal. And my biggest point, back to not my biggest point, but the third one I'll say, we got off these airwaves Wednesday night, and I was fuming, fuming at an Edmonton Oilers defenseman who decided to leave the front of the net jump to the back of the net and all of a sudden leave the front wide open for an easy Calgary Flames goal. Oh my God. And Mackenzie Weger in game two, they've played a pretty solid game. It's one, one, you got this team, you're going to overtime 20 seconds, whatever it is. And for no reason, he leaves the front and you're not just leaving the front um, to maybe go to a fourth liner as the puck. And even then, it wouldn't make sense. It's Nikita Kucherov who does this beautiful shoulder check as the puck's rimming along the wall. And he looks and sees Uyghur leave for no reason. A Uyghur, what a season he had. He's a great player. Yeah. He's going to make a ton of money, but oh, what's he doing? Kucherov makes a sick dish that Ross Colton said, I saw it was him. I knew I was getting it. And he <laughs> buries it far down. <laughs> and you're sitting there. I was sitting there. I, I, I gasped. I, I sent out a tweet. It, the tweet made no sense. It's, oh, my God. Series over. Oh, my God. What just happened? I can't believe what just happened. Like, 
it is amazing to think of that kind of mental mistake last minute of a game in a second round playoff series, never leave the front of that. And it was right after we said it uh, the next evening, excuse me. So it's been a comical list of errors for this Panthers team. And in the end, you look at Kucherov, Vasilevsky and Hedman, and these fucking guys know how to win. What else is there to say? Well, first of all, great breakdown. And before I, uh, before I talk about the Florida Fugazis, and I will decrown the Rangers as being the Fugazis because the real Fugazis are in the south of Florida. Um, let me pull out my hotel lotion here. Put it on both hands. Put the fucking lotion let me, in the basket. L- 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 let me put on some mascara and, <laughs> and just stroke this Tampa Bay Lightning team off with both my wrists. Bec- and, and, and a little... They already have two rings, these guys, this core group. What we saw in Game 7, the third period, them laying out and blocking shots, they have brought it over to the second round and completely put their lives on the line in order to win another series against what we thought, or at least I thought, was a superior team. Let's start in net. Vasilevsky, since that game, Game 7, allowed one goal. Game 1, against Florida, allowed one goal. Game two, one goal. Game three, one goal. You can't, you can't beat him. He is a fucking alien from outer space. You cannot convince me otherwise. He is locked and loaded. I want to first apologize to him for doubting him and the fact that I thought that the Panthers were going to beat them in five. In the, five, folks. Five. The back end. Seven guys. Coop's gone with seven defensemen the entire series. I was a little shocked. I, I know wit, and you know what? I'll throw it back over to you. I hated going seven defensemen. Hated it. it, it when you're a D man, it's the worst thing in the world. But these guys, it seems like they're just so dialed. They're thriving on it. It's like and, McDonough, McDonough, Cernak, and Hedman, and then the rest of the four are kind of, you know what I mean? It's then you different. got Sergachev, who, uh, yeah, by the way, him. Holy shit. Uh, 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 on the Ruta play when he cleared out the goal line. He had yep. three guys on his side of the net. They're laying out blocking shots. You mentioned McDonough sticking the lane with the wide open net for Huberto. You saw tonight when Vasilevsky didn't see that shot coming in from the point in game three. He ends up blocking it with his knee. The, the, the attention to detail that this Tampa Bay Lightning team has right now is fucking nuts. You, you would think that Florida would have it considering they haven't won jack shit. No. The champs came to play and as far as the guys up front not only is it the Malkin Sid type situation where you have point and you have Kucherov two of the most dynamic offensive players in the world well it's sure as shit it's hard to cover both of them well when one goes down you're like oh well now all, a lot of the focus is going to be on Kucherov he has elevated his game even after going through the flu game six and seven, he's been the best forward in the series, bar none, making every play, the key moments, shifting over to Florida on the eventual uh, backbreaker, the Stamkos goal, the third goal in game three. Horrible fucking change. They beat four guys with one pass up the ice. He comes inside the blue line, shimmy shakes a little bit, slides it right over in Stamkos' bread basket. He ain't fucking missing that one-timer. Stamkos, game two. Hey, Bob almost had it, too. Got to shout him out. Bob hasn't been an issue at all. That Bob was like is, a question mark. No. Stamkos, three times he went down the tunnel in game two from blocking shots and laying his body on the line. Two Stanley Cups already still doing it. And then you go, you know, I can't switch over to to, to Florida yet because I'm not done stroking guys off. You talked about the depth. Who are the leading goal scorers for the Tampa Bay Lightning right now with five apiece? Ross Colton and Corey Perry. What did Corey Perry cost you in the offseason? A million bucks. You know how many people thought this guy had no game left? Ryan Callahan tweeted out, like, wow, a bunch of GMs are just shaking their heads. How much would he have helped them? You don't think Florida could use him? Only good teams, right? Like, you know, if you're a team that knew you were going to struggle, it doesn't make sense. But if you're looking to win a cup, bring him in for the fourth line power play. Look what he's doing. How about Paul? How about Nick Paul early in that game getting hit in the corner? You know what it looked like? It looked like a a grade one AC, maybe a grade two AC separation. Right back out the tunnel, battling it out right to the final whistle. This, I'm going to go over to Florida now. 
pathetic. Pathetic. They're gonna make. They're, no, they're gonna nobody's make making plays. There. Nobody's sacrificing. Nobody's blocking shots. The power play is dog shit. They're a one trick pony. Three goals for the best offense in the National Hockey League so far in these playoffs against a team that had to go seven that lost their best player. All the hockey Shocking. that they've played, you think that Florida would have the energy in the balls to be able to lay out and block some fucking shots. They have no offensive rhythm. Their feng shui is completely off. They are all out of whack. Once again, to the Tampa Bay fans, my apologies. I'm putting on the clown nose after I've done giving you the fucking deep throat special. My fucking wrists are, I get the cast on. Bravo to the fucking Tampa Bay Lightning. My apologies. I'm a clown. All right. Sorry for getting so emotional here. But and if they can close this out tonight, I mean, all oh, the rest for the injuries, you know, these guys are all battling injuries. A little more time for point. It's just I don't I, now. Granted, we have no idea if point even has a chance of coming back. But wow, I mean, the fact that they go up three nothing in this after what they went through in the first round is shocking. And Edmonton's going back to the power play. The the one thing I will say, Carl over Carl, well, Carter over here. Yeah, I call him Carl. The only he reason that hurt. Th- he's definitely he's got to be hurt. Um, the only reason that Florida got out of the first round was because he showed up. That game where they went down three nothing, where they would have went down three one in the series, he had five points in that one. If he didn't show up in that game, they were going home because we have not seen the Huberto, we have not seen the Barkov that we have seen from the regular season, and I I think they're both. Top tier, top. I think they're both top 15 to 20 players in the entire world. But playoff hockey has them right now by the gonads, and it won't let go. Yeah, in today's game, Paul, uh, Hubido, Bakov, and Giroux were a combined minus 10. I know people give a take plus minus, but it's pretty significant to have three guys combined minus 10. Uh, also, uh, there were no lineup changes after the the kind of a no show in game one. I know Merle's mentioned that like they really made no adjustments. They didn't do any lineup change. You would have thought maybe inject some some sort of new blood, maybe even throw Joe Thornton out there maybe for the power play specifically. That too, and they it, it just I, I, again like what I mentioned before. Tampa has a, a pretty distinct advantage coaching wise, and that's not a diss toward Brunette. He's new to the game, and I think we're seeing this uh, playing play, playing out in the series right you now. You know what? All right, you know what Coop said before the series. He says it's not about what's going on like on the ice and 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 skill wise out there. It's more about what's going on between the ears. And I don't know what type of mental torpedo he was throwing over to the Florida team when he said that, but it fucking landed. And it is the the mind torpedo has exploded. And the other side is shook. Um and back to Vasilevsky and you talked about the the the, the changes in game 3. Um, they did end up having that Mammon, the kid from Moscow, Russian, uh, Russia, who had a pretty decent regular season, big body. He had a breakaway at the I start know. of that game, and Vasilevsky he stopped him. And then I think it was either Reinhardt or Bennett. I want to say Reinhardt, right in front of the net, early on, wide open on a pizza in the middle of the ice, and he had a crack at it, and he stood tall in order to keep them in it early on to give that team the confidence. So. One other thing that we missed on the the, the Colorado St. Louis game was, did you think that that play was offside the first goal by O'Connor when he jumped in the air? Yeah, I was very surprised that didn't. I did that. Very I definitely did didn't challenge it. But what's fa- weird is like so many people were saying because I was on like kind of Twitter and they're like, for them not to challenge it, it's almost like they knew, right? I I feel I'm just surprised we can't get a a a, a blue line angle there. Like, why can't we get the angle of the blue line? You see it in so many situations when there are offsides. But in this one, you couldn't get the proper angle, so you would never actually know whether the puck was still before the blue line uh, before, or excuse me, after that O'Connor had entered the zone. So I know I jumped around a little bit there, but anyway, just just a chaotic, chaotic uh, start to this series for the Florida Panthers. No doubt. 